We're here with Daniel Abraham, who is one half of the writing team known as James S.A. Corey, along with Ty Frank. You know them as the author of The Expanse novels and also in the writer's room for the wildly successful sci-fi series The Expanse on Amazon's Prime Video Streaming Service. Welcome to Den of Geek, Daniel. Happy to be here. But we're not here to talk about uh, The Expanse. We're here to talk about Avatars, Inc., which is a anthology of stories at avatars.inc. It's part of ANA's X Prize. And they asked authors such as James S.A. Corey to write stories in which characters used mechanical bodies remotely, sometimes from great distance. So were you surprised, Daniel, to hear that X Prize is actually soliciting people to develop these things in real life? Well, I'm, I'm not shocked, actually, that... Uh... It's a technology that I think we've all been moving towards, especially in the last, uh, you know, 15, 20 years. Um, the idea of a of, of telepresence, I think, has been something that we've gotten more and more comfortable with. Um, I mean, I, I remember having conversations with people I was not physically with, you know, as early as the 80s, like in text. And we've all been doing, like, telephones and and even telegraph was a, a tremendous uh, change in that relationship with space. Having it be something where we can actually manipulate things at a distance is kind of an obvious next step. That's very true. And and it's interesting that you're asked to do a creative exercise in addition to the real life exercise. So what were the parameters that you were presented with uh, before developing your story? Well, the, the big things for the hard one for me um, was actually it, it. We were encouraged to look at the positive aspects of these, and um, positive aspects is not really uh, what I do. Uh, <laughs> uh, you know, I'm I'm I'm. My job is to create fiction and conflict and uh, trouble. Uh, so I'm supposed to I'm supposed to make trouble, and we were wanting to look at. Uh, a more optimistic, a more hopeful view of what these sorts of things could do, what the applications could be. Um, and you know within that, the it was it was pretty wide open. They had uh, kind of eras that they were looking at, so kind of how far in the future we were uh, projecting this this particular application to be or this particular story to be. Um, and after that they they really, you know, took off the leash and let us do what we were going to do. Well, now, James S.A. Corey is two people. So how do you collaborate on something like that as opposed to a novel or a TV show? It's not it's not that different, really. I mean, okay. we talk about it. Um, you know, as always, one of us does the first draft. The other guy does the editing. Um, with a short story, we don't go back and forth the same way. Um, but... We we have both been working with each other for like almost a decade now, um, and so that's not a we, we've 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 greased those wheels pretty well. We're <laughs> we're good at we're good at sharing. Now, some of your colleagues, the other authors on Avatars Inc., uh, went with the idea of us using avatars to help those in ailing health. But you chose to present a story about a daughter visiting her father in his final moments. Can you tell us a little bit about what unfolds? Just kind of tease it uh, for your story entitled "Elsewhere" on Avatars Inc. There's there's a couple of things going on in Elsewhere. The part of the action is uh, a a woman who has gone to see um, her dying father, um, gone to hospice to be with him in those last minutes. Um, but there's also her story, which is, is beyond that, which is, um, she is a profoundly disabled woman, um, who interacts with the world at large through this device. And we, a lot of what we were wanting to talk about with that was the, the importance of presence in the world and the importance of allowing people to be present who might not otherwise be able to be, or in situations when they weren't able to be. And um, 
and playing that against the question against the 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 moment of somebody not being in their own body anymore it's it's, it's interesting cuz i i thought it was really cool when you had the avatar actually keep her brain from losing functionality in the areas that she normally that normally would have atrophied had she not had the avatar is that something you think would be uh i mean medically that sounds like it could actually be the truth well it, you know i i work with uh plausibility not <laughs> truth but i do think it's plausible i think that um when you see areas of brain function areas of uh brain growth and atrophy what those are indicating is use of those senses you and the creation of those experiences if you are creating those experiences i'm not sure it matters what the input are um so yeah i i think that uh there there is a real opportunity for that kind of technology to to replace parts of experience that we wouldn't be able to to access otherwise. Were there any ideas uh, for avatar usage that you tossed around with Ty, but discarded when you were coming up with your story? You know, I don't remember there being, a, I mean, we, we, we ran through um, a few things that are kind of the, the starter ideas for that. I mean, there's always the well, you'd be. What would you be able to do? You'd be able to go into dangerous environments. Okay. Well, then, eh. and I, <laughs> yeah. I mean, sure. Um, but I don't know. For me, the the there's a lot of um, a lot of stories about application that are cool applications, but not necessarily cool stories, or at least they weren't stories that I could put my hands on. Um, so yeah, there were, there were a bunch of things where it was, it was cool as a, a technical thing, but it was not, it wasn't a story that, that spoke to us. Did you get a chance to look at some of the other author's submissions that did explore some of those things? Haven't. I'm, I'm, I'm really <laughs> looking forward to getting my copy of this thing. Um, but I haven't, I haven't, uh, I haven't seen it yet. Well, what's cool. And I'll go ahead and mention this to our audience as well is that, you know, they're, they're soliciting, um, aspiring writers to write their own 2,500 to 3,500 word story in the same vein. It's due on May 8th. So by the time this video comes out, you got less than a week <laughs> to do it. But, <laughs> But uh, the stories are free. So there's 24 stories in PDF form and EPUB for your, your Kindles and, and whatnot. And so you can read these stories. That's what I did. I read all 24 of them and enjoyed them greatly. And uh, James S.A. Corey is on there with everyone else. So you've got a bit of experience build, word, world building, though, since you've done The Expanse and its book form and, and on TV. But what do you think of the idea of linking the 24 stories in terms of world building in the Avatars, Inc. with this 25th tale coming from aspiring writers? I Well, world building is always tricky because it's a, a bid for um, logical consistency um, yeah. all the way down. And, and nothing, nothing can get in the way of storytelling better than... Um, kind of fetishizing accuracy. <laughs> um, what we what we do is when we're making up stories is evoke an experience in you. I mean, they're talking about um, having people, having your brains respond to technology. Stories are a kind of technology that I'm, if I'm really doing my job, is making your visual cortex fire. It's making your audio cortex fire. It's having all of those things, all those experiences be evoked. Um, and if we're putting more obstacles in the way of that, um, you know, it might be fun. Obstacles create a certain amount of creativity. They're also obstacles. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, what's cool is what you're describing is the avatar experience. And in essence, when you're reading a book, the book or the characters become your avatar and you're living in the world. 
You are. I mean, it, the a book is an invitation to hallucinate. That's that's <laughs> what it's that's what it does, um, and it gives you um, an experience of a place that you are not actually physically present in, in a kind of a limited venue. I mean, there's there's a not a lot of interactivity, uh, <laughs> as far as, you know, plot goes, but but yeah, I mean all. A lot of our technologies are about expanding the scope of our consciousness, avatars and books and fiction and television and movies. All of those have that in common. I kept thinking while I was reading your story and the other stories that if Bobby Draper could somehow operate her Martian Marine power suit remotely, she'd be pretty unstoppable. Was there any technology like that in the expanse that I may have missed? <laughs> the problem, the problem with the, that technology in the expanse is light speed. Yeah. Um, Communication. You know, yeah. Yeah. It's, it sucks playing, uh, just on your Xbox at the ping. <laughs> the ping between the lag. Here, the, the ping between here and Mars is bad. There's a bad lag between here and Mars. Um, so that's, that's kind of the limiting factor, and that talking about world building, that's uh, the 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 thing we chose to accept in the expanse that kind of made it feel weird was that light speed was light speed and we couldn't break it. Um, and so we have a lot of things like uh, people talking to each other from uh, great distances, having to send messages and wait for messages to come back because this that you and I are doing works great as long as we're on the same planet. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, and th that's definitely the kind of vein that most of the stories fall under. Near future, a lot of times that have climate calamities involved uh, and definitely on the same planet, although there is some, some stories that take place in space. So something for everyone. Thank you so much, Daniel, for joining us to talk about Avatars, Inc. It's at avatars.inc for those of you who want to check out James S.A. Corey's story and all the rest of them, and maybe submit your own stories as well. Thanks a lot, Daniel. Thank you.